Howdy, howdy. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Snapmaker U1. I've had this printer for about three weeks now, and I've amassed about 250 print hours on it. I figured it's time to give my honest feedback on the printer. Base overview about the Snapmaker U1. It can handle four colors, which are side mounted onto the side. It has, by default, no enclosure into it, as well as it has four tool heads. The build plate supports 270 by 270 by 270 millimeter print volume. And the biggest draw for it, because of the four print heads, is the fact that there is minimal waste, with it only resulting in the prime tower and the initial extrusion. The initial setup was a breeze, taking me about an hour to complete while live streaming. So the average person will probably be about 30 minutes to be able to unpackage it. As far as the packaging, very well done, very clean, very easy to access everything. The tools that it included put together very well. All the tool heads were packaged pretty good. And overall, I was able to complete it with relative ease. The only issue I did run into during it had to do with me misunderstanding the manual with one of the cables back here, putting it in the wrong spot. But past that, it was a breeze. As for the filament, it is a side loader. So you do load it into the motor right there, right here. And then you just choose how you want the filament to be right from the screen. You can also do it from the app as well. The calibration process does take a bit of time to go through. It also requires you to do a little bit of manual effort with you manually scrubbing the brush. However, you shouldn't have to do the calibration all that often once it's been complete. As for the print quality, every single one of these models that you see here, amongst many others, were all printed on the Snapmaker. Because of the four tool heads, I was able to achieve print speeds as well as quality that I never would have tested before with my P1S. Especially visible when it comes to models that have high changes like red and white, like the Steampunk Dragon right here. Before, the amount of flush you'd have to do to be able to do the white with a red would be so much, it would be hard not to have it bleed through. However, on the Snapmaker, you don't have to worry about any bleed. I was also able to do a small Master Chief helmet using support, Petchy support. Came off nice and clean. Everything looks good. Even something with a little bit more detail, like these helmets right here, I've done. All of which was printed on the Snapmaker. And nice thing is also, individual items. Before, whenever I was looking to print smaller items in multicolor, especially if I was going four colors, to optimize the amount of waste, I'd be filling a bed. Now, I can just print one at a time if I need to. I still do fill the bed when I need to, but for gifts like these are, I can very easily just do them one at a time. That has allowed me that has changed my workflow drastically just with this one printer alone. I have also done multi-material prints between TPU that I don't have an example right now because my dog chewed it up, but I was able to print essentially a soccer ball uh, that was between a orange and a white. And it came across beautifully. I'll see if I can get a picture of it and put it in the video here. So as for speed, the one negative that we have about it has to do with the initial startup. If you start a print, it's going to provide you with an opportunity to do a flow calibration as well as the bed leveling. And that is one thing that they have announced that they are working on, but the initial setup does take about 20 minutes to go through. So the first 20 minutes to where it actually starts printing the first line is much slower. Now that being said, I have printed models like this one right here where I've opted not to do the flow calibration and bed leveling just because speed was a factor. And it's looking great. So use your best judgment for that. For me, 
Small items, I'm not going to worry about it. Big items, I'll always make sure that I do the full calib the full bed leveling and flow calibration. The color swaps are able to finish in about 8 to 10 seconds. Between it pulling and it putting a little bit on the prime tower, which from what I understand it puts it on the prime, prime tower just to uh, get some of the old filament that was in the nozzle out and just right back to printing. Very fast process. One thing of note as far as speed is concerned that I have noticed is there are many times where this, it's, the, it's one negative that we do have on this printer, is the time remaining that shows on the print, as well as what it shows in the app, will sometimes not line up. I haven't been able to narrow it down as to what is the cause, because I've done large models, and it's not that far off, and I've done small models, and it's drastically off. It's not based on the color change, but the good news is, with that being software related, that's something that they can fix, and with any luck, they'll work on it, they'll get it fixed. Now the question that everyone's asking, how much time savings do you really get on the Snapmaker U1? Well, I have a Bamboo P1S that I have used for a year. And I have tried to do this model. And on this model, it's going to take 87 hours and result in about 500 grams of waste. On the Snapmaker U1, 27 hours. And it came across beautiful with just the smallest support on the tooth having fell. But if I do say so myself, so far this is my favorite model that I've ever printed. It's beautiful, came across great, and no filament waste. I mean, a half a kilogram is huge savings. On to another one. This, snap mate, uh, this Master Chief helmet, this one on the U1, is 15 hours that's how i did it on the p1s it is 40 hours and uh, 300 grams of waste as for dragons the steampunk dragon on the u1 this goes through 328 color changes i guess i didn't specify that this is 1791 color changes and this is 1,107 color changes. On the Steampunk, it is 328 color changes. On the U1, it took 12 hours for three colors. And on the P1S, it's 20 hours with 140 grams of waste. And like I said before, zero bleed because of the tool head. Another important part, reliability. I've had 250 hours on this printer, and I've had two failures one of which was a layer shift um, which was probably my sixth print that i had done not quite sure what caused it and i haven't had a layer shift since on it so i can't speak to what the cause was as for the other one it was with the first batch of the master chief helmet um, where i had a support failure now the print still would have worked but some of the support had fallen off which resulted in uh, me ending the print early due to that Past that, everything that I've printed, I haven't had to use any glue, just goes right down, no issues. And it's reliable enough that I keep the Snapmaker U1 out of my garage, where during the temperature right now, it has gotten down to about 50 degrees in my garage and no issues, even though it has no enclosure. Another issue that I've run into is with the network. It is a known issue that they are working on, and the good news is with it being a software issue, it's something that they can hopefully fix. Um, I am currently having to run the printer in land mode, and in land mode, it works beautifully. However, there are times when I'd like to be able to run it in cloud mode, so that way if there is an error, I don't have to just walk out here and check, it'll actually send me a notification. That would be something I would like. So that is something they are working on, and they have fixed some of their network issues. However, another one is I keep getting disconnected from the app. So every time I connect to it, it works. And then if I log go to check it again in about six hours, I get logged back out. That makes me not even want to use the app. It makes me only want to keep it in land mode, which so far I've been able to do. 
Um, and hopefully that's something that they are going to work on fixing, just like they're working on their network issues. So overall, what is my overall thoughts of the Snapmaker U1? As you can probably guess from the review, I think the machine is amazing. I've been running two P1Ss, an A1 Mini, and a A1 that's currently getting repaired for about a year. And I actively push my machines um, with this one having over 5,000 hours alone on it and us having over 10,000 hours altogether between all the printers. Um, I do operate a print farm where I sell regularly. So this machine, with all that experience that I've had, it's an amazing machine. I give it a 10 out of 10. I've always loved my Bamboo P1S, and if this keeps up, I'm never going to buy another P1S because this, this machine is that great. I am going to have to get an enclosure. That's something that is going to be coming out. So once I get that, it'll be great. That being said, my review is a 10 out of 10 in land mode. If we're factoring in the app and the issues associated with that, and if you don't want to put it in land mode, I give it a 9 out of 10. It's still a great, great printer. Um, I love it. I enjoy even just watching the tool head. I mean, it's just great. I plan on pushing some more TPU multi-material prints through it soon. And uh, yeah, overall, that's my review. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And I'll answer any questions that you might have. As well as if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to be doing plenty more content in relation to the Snapmaker. As well as how it how my days normally go in my print farm. So please subscribe and follow along with the journey. And thank you for watching.